April of last year, Jonathan Robinson murdered Renita Nunu Williams. He did it in front of a Facebook Live audience. The community and Caddo District Attorney James Stewart immediately demanded the death penalty. Today, a Caddo judge sentenced Robinson to life in prison plus 100 years. Our Josh Rogers visits with Caddo DA James Stewart tonight. Stewart explaining why he decided to let Robinson plead guilty to avoid the death penalty. And Josh joining us now to explain. Uh, Jeff Stewart says the decision ultimately came down to Nunu's family, who decided they didn't have to have the death penalty, they just needed closure. I didn't know it was going to happen. I just never shared it with nobody. Because I knew what I wanted in my heart and what I believed in. I didn't believe in killing nobody. I never believed in killing nobody. Anita Williams faced her daughter's killer in a Caddo Parish courthouse today, but it wasn't the first time they've spoken. Robinson had tried to apologize. Yeah, I had a feeling that eventually she would come around. Um, she knew in her heart that bringing uh, that killing Jonathan Robinson was not going to bring Renita Williams back. She knew that. She knew that from day one. But it was the pressure from the public outcry. It was the pressure from the media. And most of all, it was the pressure from, you know, a lot of the women and black females and stuff in Shreveport and all around the nation, you know, and all of that pressure was put on that one lady and it clouded her judgment. It clouded her judgment. She knew in her heart that with her pursuing this, she was no better than Jonathan Robinson was. And she knows that she's better than Jonathan Robinson. She knows that she's not a murderer. She knows that she's not a killer. And it takes courage to stand up against the pressure takes a lot of courage to do that so I must commend her for that you know she stayed true to herself throughout it all she stayed true to herself and now the family has closure and they can move on with their lives um, she can raise those beautiful grandkids of hers and take steps toward a meaningful life. And hopefully she'll instill in them the value of life. Many times. Every time you reached out to me, I never let no one know. This wasn't the first time you apologized, and it's about the third time with letters and writing. I just never let no one know what was going on with me. The months of Robinson's attempted outreach had an effect on New News Mom. She told Caddo DA James Stewart privately she was okay without the death penalty. Stewart says it was now or never for a plea deal. We wanted to make sure that he really wanted to plead guilty, but he's going to plead guilty to what I wanted him to plead guilty to. Now, either he was going to plead now or we would not entertain any other plea offers in the future. For a family seeking closure, pursuing the death penalty would have only prolonged the pain. Death penalty cases are very complicated. They take a long period of time. Anytime you're dealing with family members who want closure, uh, you're always open to doing something different if you get cooperation. So we feel a lot better. It hurts me. It hurts me so bad. By killing Jonathan, it's not going to bring Renita back. No, whatsoever. So decision has been made, and that's what it is. A decision Anita Williams came to alone after months of internal struggle. And I, I, I forgive him. I forgive him. But I never will forget. Robinson tried to plead guilty at least twice before. In court today, he turned to Anita Williams and apologized. Jeff, both sides crying, she did accept his apology. Pretty powerful stuff, Josh. Yeah. Really was. All right, thank you, Josh. We appreciate that. And as we said previously, Robinson received life in prison for his murder charge, plus 100 years for firing his weapon at Shreveport Police when they attempted to de-escalate the situation.
Yeah, I'm glad. I'm really glad that it turned out the way it did. As far as those extra hundred years, that's just a technicality that James Stewart wanted to put on there on top of it. Uh, I mean, you might as well have added a million years. It didn't matter. It didn't matter how many more extra years you added. Life is life. So it's kind of like Eileen Wuornos. You know, how many times can you kill a person? You can only kill them one time. So, you know, it was just a technicality. It was just something to tell people out there that, hey, if you do this, you're going to get, you know, 100 years. So it was just a technicality. But I'm glad that she came up with that decision on her own. It was, it was best for the family. And why continue to let all of these uh, bottom feeders, you know, just continue to make money off of your dead daughter? I mean, that's what they want. They want to do this. You got people that scour the Internet daily looking for the most horrible stories that they can report on so that they can get a check from it. They can get a Google check from it. Google's fine with it. YouTube's fine with it. The people are fine with it. The viewers are fine with it. But think for yourself, you know, I mean, these people are bottom feeders, you know. But one of these days, they're going to be reporting on one of their, the deaths of one of their own loved ones. That's what I'm waiting on. I'm waiting on the day to come when these same people that have been getting checks from the deaths, the horrible deaths of all these different black people. I'm waiting on them to get their check from the death of their wife or their mother or their sister or their daughter. I can't wait to see one of those videos because see, you have to realize these people will do anything for a dollar. They're, the sky is the limit. There's nothing they won't do for a dollar. They are just that hard up. Their livelihood depends on doing this. They can't make it without doing this. Even though they may have another job, they have so many bills that they've accumulated and acquired that for the rest of their days, they will have to continue to scour the internet looking for every heinous story about black women and black men and report on it get hundreds of thousands of views, get Google ad checks, and then next thing they're looking for the next story to capitalize on. You know, so uh, in the end, God sees everything that they're doing. You know, and believe me, one of these days, which they will never get up on YouTube and report on the slaughter and death and murder and rape of their sister. They aren't going to do that. But I'll do it. I will do it. I will re record a video and post it on that to remind them that, you know what? What's good for the goose is good for the gander. You know, you can get on here and get paid and capitalize on everybody else's death. Well, you know what? Now God has turned it around and now somebody else is going to report on the death of your sister or your mother or your daughter. It's only a matter of time. These people never get away with what they're doing on here. All of these bottom feeders that y'all support, all they want is a dollar or 50 cent. That's, that's the only thing that they're after. That's their complete motivation 
for everything that they do, for every video they record. <clears throat> it's all about a dollar. But you know what? That same dollar isn't going to bring back your murdered sister. Because some of these same monsters are going to come after you.